You're listening to Season 6 of Fried, the Burnout Podcast with your host, Kate Donovan. Fried exists to hashtag end burnout culture, to help listeners release any shame, blame, guilt, or judgment that you have about burning out and to create spontaneous moments of healing through recognition of shared humanity with other people who have experienced burnout and lived to tell the tale. Fried and its associated Facebook group are free resources provided for you from our hearts. Our paid work includes keynote speaking and one-on-one coaching. You can find information about that at katedonovan.com. And now, here is this week's Healing Packed episode. Hello, Fried Fam. I don't know if you can believe this because I certainly am struggling to believe it myself. We have recently passed over 100 guest episodes of Fried the Burnout Podcast. I didn't even notice that it happened. So technically, we have gone beyond 113 Fried the Burnout Podcast guest episodes. And so today I wanted to go through a little bit of memory lane and take you through two episodes from each season, introducing you to those guests again that had messages that I really think that you should remember or messages that stuck out to me. This was almost impossible to choose because every single episode of Fried is really valuable and has something to offer. However, I did make these choices based on little sort of niggles that stayed in my head over time that said, hey, think about this, think about this, think about this. So while I'm sharing this with you, what I would love for you to do would be to think about which episodes have stayed in your mind. Think about which guest episodes or Straight From K episodes really stuck with you, gave you a message or an idea or a moment of resonance that you hold with you in your burnout recovery journey because you know that it's going to help you take the next step. You know that when you get stuck, it helps you push through, or I don't even like the words push through, but you know what I mean. And if you have an episode like that, I would love for you to share it with me somehow, some way. Email me. If you get my newsletter, just hit reply to any of my newsletters that goes straight to my inbox. You can DM me on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Facebook. You can drop it in the Facebook group. That would be my favorite place to see it because then everyone else can sort of comment on their favorite posts too and we can have a little share party. But I want you to really take a moment to think about which things stuck with you and then ask yourself this one question. Have I implemented this message? Did I allow this to shift me enough that I decided to make a change? Some of the things I'm revisiting now are because I still have work to do in certain areas, right? Not in all of the ones that I'm going to mention, but in certain areas. So there are things that stick with me because maybe I haven't done it yet. Maybe I haven't taken a step that needs to be taken in that area. And that's why it's still sort of in the back of my head. So we're going to start all the way back at season one. And please, for the love of all things that are holy, do not judge my sound quality from season one. If you go back and listen to these episodes, I was recording them in my mother's living room with my foot in a cast post-surgery, and I had no idea that there were things that you could do with microphones and rooms to make podcasts sound good because I never made a podcast before. So grant me a little grace here, people, okay? First, episode I want to talk to you about is the very first episode that was ever aired of Fried the Burnout Podcast. And the guest on this episode was Ashley Rose. Ashley jumped in straight into the deep end with me in that first episode and talked about how trauma relates to burnout, how childhood trauma, adverse childhood experiences can relate to coping mechanisms that can cause you to burn out later in your life. This was something that I had ideas about I had some connections about, but I hadn't thought about in that way until I had that conversation. And that conversation made it so clear that that has become a cornerstone of everything we do here at Fried. And most recently, I was writing a paper for this degree program that I'm finishing up. And I found someone's, I was writing a paper between high adverse childhood experience scores and their correlation with later burnout, which we don't have any research on 
right now, but there is a woman who wrote a doctoral thesis on it, or at least her master's thesis, and I could only get access to the first 17 pages of it, but it was on this exact topic, and I was like, <laughs> I wrote to her on Instagram, and I was like, please let me read your doctoral thesis if you have it. So fingers crossed she will get back to me because that would be phenomenal. That episode opened up a lot of conversation. It opened up a lot of connection with people. And it gave a lot of people permission to look at their lives that were, quote unquote, not traumatized to say, you know what, maybe there are a few things. Maybe there are a few coping mechanisms that I created that have, you know, helped me to participate in this burnout world. So that's a really important one. Second one, Maggie Reyes. Maggie works in relationship counseling. She is a phenomenal marriage coach. She's really, she is just beyond. And in this episode, she shared two things that are absolutely critical. Number one, you know that I'm always telling you to go to your doctor first if you're burnt out. This is because I want to make sure that there's nothing going on, vitamin D deficiency, anemia, thyroid issues, et cetera, et cetera, that are preventing you from having energy that you're going to, you know, try to fix by coaching and therapy and mental health practices when really there's a physiological issue that needs to be addressed. If you need more iron or you need more vitamin D or vitamin B12, like go get that shit flat out. So Maggie real went to the doctor, she realized she had sleep apnea. So she wasn't getting restful sleep. She got a CPAP machine changed everything for her. So burnout was part of this story, but part of her burnout was this physical portion. And I think that's so important to remember in a world that is telling us constantly that trauma is the root of all of our problems. And I know I just said that trauma is a cornerstone of what's going on here. And I don't think that that's not true. And I think we have to look at this part too and be fair about it. Keep to, you know a foot in both camps. The other thing that Maggie said during her episode was that to get out of burnout, oftentimes we're looking to do sort of drastic things. And what she recommends really, and I agree with her completely, is that you quote unquote follow the breadcrumbs, that you look to the smallest little hints of what you should be doing next and follow those and allow them to slowly transform you instead of trying to make this big massive change because big massive changes take big massive energy that you just don't have right now. So I love that episode for that. Season two, first one, Simone Craig. Simone talked about this one concept that, and she said that the way we spend energy is the way we spend money. So this was the first time on Friday that we really took a look at the relationship between our financial security, our financial patterns, and our energy patterns. And I just thought it was fascinating. And as someone who how do I say this, who struggles to balance the influx and outflux of money in her life on a regular basis. I'm always afraid that there's too much or too little, that if there's too much over here, then I'm not going to have enough over there. It's like I, I, have a, I have a hard time spending it. And that's the same pattern I have in my life. If I spend too much energy on school, I'm not going to have enough for the podcast. If I do too much on the podcast, I'm not going to have enough for my clients. If I do too much speaking, I'm not going to have, <gasps> right? This is super anxiety ridden for me. So getting a handle on your finances can be part of your burnout recovery story, which is just a fascinating thing to think about. I loved it. Second person in season two was Dr. Valerie Ryan who wrote the book, Patriarchy Stress Disorder. If you ever wanted to know how our culture affects your burnout, this is the book that you need to read. And this is for both men and women, because Dr. Valerie Ryan, in her book, while she is primarily speaking to women, she was also talking about how the patriarchy isn't serving our men either. And I think it's really important that we again, take a balanced view here that we realize that this system that we've created and that we all participate in isn't really working for too many people at the end of the day. So her book is critical and she has a like break out of the patriarchy jail process in her book that I think that everybody should go through because it's fabulous. Season three, we kicked off season three with Melanie Moberg, who her episode 
She's now Melanie King. But her episode can be wrapped up in one word, and that word is codependent. We talked about addiction, trigger warning. We also talked about suicide. We talked about how addiction and codependence often go together and how you have to learn, and she breaks down how, how to separate empathy and helpfulness and compassion and codependence and overgiving. She says that codependence is this way that we give to other people so much until there's nothing of us left until we are completely lost. This is such a common thing in burnout that I would never be able to go through past episodes and not mention this one. Second one in season three, Shante Javon Taylor, who is the neuroscientist to end all neuroscientists. She is on a mission to empower a billion minds, and I am here to serve that mission with her. She uses neuroscience as a way to give people back their power and say, hey, this is how your brain is working. This is when it's not working. This is how you optimize your brain function. This is how that matters in a world of creating more equity and dealing with our natural biases, et cetera. And within the episode, we go through a basically a deep dive into the neuroscience of burnout. This is an overview. This is an hour-long episode, so it won't get you everything you'll ever need to know, but it will teach you the basics, and it's an incredibly powerful thing to understand for your own journey. Season four, I'm so excited about this one, my friend Jim Young. Jim wrote a book called Expansive Intimacy, and he talks about burnout in men, and he talks about that the recovery tool that he wants men to use for burnout is being more expansively intimate, which doesn't have anything to do with sensuality, has much more to do with creating strong relationships with both men and women to not feel like you have to stand alone all the time. Jim talks about his own experience being a white male and being financially privileged and being sort of at the top of the heap and still burning out and feeling miserable. Part of it was because of things he got from his childhood. Again, we're back to this, you know, adverse childhood experiences thing. And part of it was this patriarchal set of ideas that be the man, he has to be the, you know, all of this kind of stuff. So it was important to me to speak to men not only in this podcast, but within this review episode to say, listen, we get it. It's not only women burning out out here. And there are ways for you to heal too. Second episode of season four is my friend Casey Davidson, who hosts the Hello Someday podcast. And she, if you are sober curious, thinking that you're drinking too much alcohol, wondering how your alcohol is affecting your burnout recovery, she is the person you need to listen to. Her podcast is just short of a million downloads right now, which is such an incredible accomplishment, but also goes to show you what a problem this is in our society. As we talked about earlier, like addiction and codependency and burnout can all go hand in hand. Alcohol dependency, alcohol addiction, and work addiction that leads to burnout can also go hand in hand. And we talked about that in this episode super important. If you are drinking before bed on a regular basis, you're never going to have the kind of sleep that you need to recover properly. Does that mean you should give up drinking totally? Not necessarily. However, is it something that we should try to look into cutting back on if we want to recover from burnout and get our energy back? Yeah, probably. Season five, Dan Sykes. Dan calls himself the somatic fanatic. Now, on Fried, we talk about somatic practices a lot, how you have to be in your body to recover from burnout, how important your nervous system is. Dan, in this episode, breaks down how to do this if you've never heard of it before and how curiosity over judgment is one of your key skills that you'll need in order to be able to do this. So if you're able to tap into curiosity around your body and spend some time with yourself on a physical level, you will be able to unwind some shit that's trapped in your body. I thought that this was a very well explained episode that really dug into why it matters so much 
that your physical body be part of your burnout recovery. The next one from season five is Aneka Roberts. Aneka is a systems person. She creates systems for small businesses and to help them function better. We spoke about systems for an hour. You might wonder what systems and burnout have to do with one another. But if you, especially if you're an entrepreneur, you know that the things that you're repeating on a day-to-day basis because you don't have a system in place, that email that you have to set up from scratch again every single time because you don't have an outline written out, et cetera. When you don't have systems in place to make your life easier, you're spending extra energy figuring everything out fresh every time you do it, which means that you are blocking the energy that you need to have available for creativity, for joy, for fun, for things that are not get this task done kind of energy. She blew my mind in this episode, and I think she'll blow yours too. Season six, we're here. First episode of season six was a fried listener asked for episode. This was you requested this episode, and I thought I was going to have a hard time finding it. This episode was with Newton Cheng, and the thing that you were asking for as listeners was, we want to talk to somebody who burnt out in corporate and stayed in their corporate position after recovering from burnout or, or during burnout recovery. I thought this was going to be impossible to find because people that don't have a book to sell, a program to sell, uh, you know, have less impetus to share their stories. But Newton, being the generous soul that he is, took the time to share his story. And he is the a director of health and wellness at Google. So this was a really impactful thing to listen to. He dove deep into how burning out was really affecting him being a father and a parent and how he really didn't like that, didn't like what was happening. So that was one of the sort of keys that he that he felt helped him to change. And he talks about what it meant to go back to work and what kind of support he needed to ask for and how he needed to function differently in the workplace in order to continue to be successful. So if you're looking for an episode on, I don't want to leave my corporate job, I'm in my corporate job, I want to just get my shit together and go back to work, This is the episode for you. The last episode that I'm going to share today is with Coot Blackson. Where do I start with this one? Coot wrote a book called The Power of Surrender. And for those of us that like to have control all the time over all the little things, Surrender feels really dangerous and really scary. And when Coot was explaining to me his process of surrender, he allowed space for me to ask him, yeah, but what does that look like in action? Because we don't just surrender and then stop. He came all the way back around to something that Maggie Reyes said. We've got to follow the breadcrumbs. You can take action while you're surrendering. And finding that energy in that paradox of like releasing some semblance of control and allowing life to flow and being so in tune that when you see a breadcrumb, you'll actually follow it. This was an especially healing episode for me personally. And I know Sarah said it really touched her and it's something that's been on her mind a lot. So both of us sort of had this big moment with this episode. So we hope that it helps you along too. All right. That is my roundup of 12 episodes from the last six seasons of Fried the Burnout podcast, 12 options out of 113 guest episodes that we have had already. Massive thank you to all of our fabulous guests who come on here and vulnerably share their stories for the purpose of your healing. It is always an honor to me to hold space for someone's story, whether they be guest or client. And I am so grateful that people take the time to be on Fried and share their stories. And as I wrap up, thank you to the listeners. Without you, none of this would matter. If nobody was listening to all this work we were putting in, it wouldn't mean anything. But right now there's 20,000 of you every single month. And While on one hand, I think, oh man, that means a lot of people are burnt out. 
I've known that this many people are burnt out for years. We could have a million people a month listening to this podcast and it still wouldn't be reaching enough ears. But I am grateful, so grateful for the people that are showing up, that are choosing themselves, that are allowing moments of healing. And for those of you out there that are thinking, oh my God, she didn't say this episode. Tell me which one it was. I can't wait to hear it. If you're in the Facebook group, you can drop it in there. And if you're not, you can DM me, email me, do any of the things. Now, also, if you are a listener and you use Apple Podcasts, I have a very special ask from you this week. We are at 96 reviews on Apple Podcasts, and reviews are one of the ways that we shift up in the ranks when it comes to um, Apple's charts. So if we could get us four more reviews on Apple Podcasts, particularly, this is like insert eye roll emoji here, particularly in the United States, because I have 134 counting across the globe, but 96 in the United States, and those are the ones that Apple are counting for these particular charts. That would be super, super, super helpful and would help Fried grow more than you realize. Also, I got some really great reviews recently that I shared in my stories. So if you want to leave a totally heartfelt review and be all over my Instagram, that would be fun too. All right, Fried fam. Until next time. Thank you.